3 News. We are more than news. We also televise programs, events, and archives that are the lifeblood of our community. Today is Friday, June the 22nd. And I'm Jim Lakey, your host. And these are the features that will be on today's show. Uh, empty stage interview with Mr. and Mrs. McKnight and second archive video of the grade school news from 1985. We televised this program live at 11 each Friday this summer. It is also recorded and uploaded to YouTube right after the show. If you can't watch us live, you can still watch the show at your convenience at sandylandcenter.org. If you have news, public service announcements, or programs that you would like covered, come by the studio at 110 East 3rd or send us an email at ssctv3 at gmail.com. We can accommodate those wishing to appear live on the show and those wishing to make a pre-recorded studio video or those who have video coverage on location. At this time, we have a short feature of some of the sponsors that make this program possible. Well, at this time, we have our weather for the week. And we have partly cloudy on uh, Saturday, 87 the high, 64 the low. On Sunday, we're scheduled for a thunderstorm, 86 the high, 66 the low. And another thunderstorm on Monday, 86 the high, 66 the low. Then on Tuesday, we have partly cloudy, 90 degrees the high, and 70 the low. And then sunny on Wednesday and Thursday both, 97 the high on Wednesday, the low 71. And on Thursday, sunny and 98, the high 73 the low. And then on Friday, partly cloudy, 96 the high, and 73 the low. And at the Sunflower Senior Center's uh, Senior Lunch, uh, we have uh, the following uh, menu. On Monday, baked fish with macaroni and cheese. On Tuesday, Swedish meatballs with noodles. On Wednesday, turkey burger on a bun and a hot potato salad. Thursday, baked pork chop with sweet potato casserole. And on Friday, chicken cassatori with rice and a salad. <clears throat> Each year, we celebrate music in our school's month. This year, during the month of March, TV3 documented the junior high and high school band and choir students as they participated in the CPL Music Festival at Barton County Community College in Great Bend. TV3 also documented the fourth grade general music class as the students participated with their broom whackers. 
The video that follows is an empty stage interview that was recorded the last day of school with Kristen and McKnight, who are the St. John music teachers. The stage is empty. The performers and the members of the audience have all gone home. So now that all of the action is over, I have requested to have a brief conversation with the two masterminds of this past year of music education. Meet Kristen and Mac Knight, a unique teaching duo because very rarely is an entire music department run by a husband and wife team. Kristen is responsible for the general music program and Mac is responsible for the band and choir program. First off, how has this joint responsibility affected your home and professional lives? And what are some of the advantages and disadvantages? I feel that sometimes we can take work home and it's, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's beneficial. And other times you should probably leave it at school. But it's interesting to be able to talk to someone about those musical concerns that kind of crop up. So it's... It's nice to bounce ideas off of somebody who's in the same field. I could see that working if you went home and somebody was in another field and you mentioned something yes. about tessitura and some of these yeah. strange words, you know, it would make much sense. But you guys talk the same language. Yes. Yep. This is good. And so, as far as home life goes, who gets stuck with the dishes when we're at a program run? Paper plates. Paper? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's Paper a, plates. The modern technology, yes, yes take over. <laughs> yes. That's one of the things you have to do is, is adjust and switch roles when, yes. when you have a, a double header leader role yeah. like you have here. So it, it's kind of interesting. Paper plates, I like that answer. <laughs> now, when you left college, you both knew that you were going to be teaching music, I assume. Mm -hmm. yep. Did the thought ever cross you or your counselors ever give you a heads up that finding a double job would be a real pain and somebody might have to play second fiddle for a while? Uh, no, because when we got out, uh, I graduated a couple of years earlier than Kristen. Okay. And uh, I found a job right off the bat. Um, Kristen had a couple more years to finish. When she finished, she went to her student teaching at a neighboring school district um, to where I was teaching. She subbed for a semester and then miraculously, the elementary position in, that dis in the same district I was in opened up and she got that job. Um, otherwise, we probably would have been teaching in two separate districts. And in that area, up by Kansas City, there's a little more uh, availability as far as the number of school districts. So we probably would have figured something out. But it just, ha so it just so happened that I'd be in the same school district. So it's kind so of. So if the leprechauns were smiling on yes. you. Yes. yes. Now, the next question here is for Mac. Many times we hear about the curse of the 1A and 2A schools. And have you met this problem, and how have you dealt with this student involved in everything challenge? Uh, it is a challenge, um, but I don't see it so much as a curse as a opportunity for the kids to really structure themselves. Uh, when they're involved in so many activities, they have to plan out in advance what they're going to do, um, which means that they're a little more conscientious about their plans for the day, the week, the month, the year. Um, in some places I came from a bigger school and you did your one thing or your two things and that was all you were almost allowed to do. Here they're encouraged to do as many things as they can which is really beneficial I think to all the programs. So at times it can be challenging when you have someone gone for uh, a sports practice or an event or, or whatever but uh, the staff is really receptive to helping out with if you need that extra time with them they'll be willing to give it to you. Have you seen that problem in the elementary so much? No. No it doesn't exist yeah. down there. The kids don't take off to play golf and, no. and pole vault and stuff <laughs> like that. They do have a scheduling uh, juggling you might say mm -hmm. with, with all the extra the computer classes the yeah. math things have to go in and out. Sometimes as an elementary teacher you end up with no break in the morning, yeah, and s s some things like yeah. that, which it tight scheduling. So you have to. But plan it's okay. Ahead. The teachers are very flexible, and they're willing to work with me if I needed a break. Or f yeah, it's I've not noticed the big. Just fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now on the wall there are many feedback notes, and I've read some of them, and uh, that's how they see the year. But how would you rate the year? And looking ahead, what do you want to do? next year. Let's start with Kristen. Oh boy. I 
am just over the moon on how this year went. I'm very pleased. I thought the kids were phenomenal. They exceeded even my expectations. Um, I'm a little afraid that I set the bar too high, and now i got to figure out how we're going to go even bigger and better next year. But I'm excited. It'll be fun. It's a that's, fun challenge to have. That's good. And you have, since the second semester started, been on a dead run. I mean, with contests and traveling. I mean, I, I see your postings. You know, you're here, you're, you're there, and you're everywhere. Now, what you have to do is come up with all kinds of music. And people think that the music teacher, particularly the band director, takes the summer off. Yeah. But you, I know, have started already planning programs, looking at music and doing all kinds of things like that. So any thoughts about what you aim to do for next year? Uh, well, when we get the, the final rosters in for next year, we'll kind of evaluate uh, you know, what kind of music we can uh, handle at the different uh, grade levels. Um, uh, I don't really have any set plan as far as like a theme or anything, but I do I do start that process. Um, I started about, about a month ago, so looking at music <laughs> for next year, and I'll do it all summer long, listening to music, looking at uh, copies of music, going to music stores, and kind of find the right instrumentation and uh, the right balance of different styles of music. Uh, that's not something that's just, you know, at the last second. It, it's, it takes a lot of planning to yes, get that ready for Yes, it does. That. Now, when you teach, out of nowhere come these moments where after the day is tough and you have a moment in which you know this is why I teach. Without naming names, can either one of you come up with those aha moments which said, yes, I'm going to do this? I've been trying to think of this and I can honestly say every day I've experienced something like that. Some moments that feel bigger. Maybe yes. that you see the kid's light bulb finally go off, and some days it's something small where a challenging student is receptive, or you get a hug, or little things like that. But every day I experience that this is why I'm doing this. That's why you teach. And Mac? Uh, I've, well, there's the, the obvious things that people kind of point to. It would be like your, your district and your state level recognitions for, for individuals uh, making honor groups and... Uh, those kinds of things, but I think that when I hear a student come up to me and say, I'm thinking about being a band director or oh, thinking yes. about doing something like that, um, that means that they've had a good experience and that's something that they want to continue on, which is how I uh, got into you know, uh, being a band director and a music uh, educator, is I had a really good experience. And so um, that and then just the, like, like Kristen said, those moments where you see it in their kids' eyes where in they the finally eyes, yes. get it and then you, they understand it, and then it that just lets you know that you're doing the right thing. So. And you can walk home about this high off of the ground yeah. and say, yes, yes. <laughs> it's worth it. Now then, you have added some comedic and dramatic dimensions to your programs. <laughs> I see the chuckle here. <laughs> so what is the background for this? Well, uh, when I was in uh, uh, seventh and eighth grade, I had a band director named Scott Freebie in Manhattan. And uh, he would do something like, like this pretty much every concert. I don't think like this. Um, yes, every <laughs> concert. There would be something, some aspect that he would be involved with. Um, uh, for example, uh, we played Spinning Wheel by Blood, Sweat, and Tears uh -huh. one year. And he came out, and we all had tie dyed shirts of different colors for every section. He came out in a multicolored tie dyed shirt with dreadlocks, and he's as bald as can be. <laughs> dreadlocks and these little glasses on, and everything was groovy and cool. And uh, we did a tour around all the, all of the elementary schools in our area, and the kids just absolutely ate it up. And that was just something that it just it was, that was really cool to be a part of. And then I thought, well, if he can do it, I want to be like him. And so I just started adding these things into what I do. That's interesting. I wondered how you came up with that because I've seen a, seen a few of those things. <laughs> and now, what do you think of Mac as an actor? Have you ever just ducked your head and thought, Every oh time. no, Every uh, time. how's he going to get out of this one? Yes. <laughs> he's, he stopped telling me what he's going to do because he knows I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> so I'm with the audience. I don't know what's going to happen. Because so, he wings it a lot. Oh, I can yeah. tell. He's, he's yeah. off script from the start. Very much. Very much. Very much. But that's nice because you're keying off of the feedback. Mm -hmm. If you're on yeah. script, you don't know whether the audience with it or not, but yeah. when you key off of this, oh, this worked, and uh -huh. so you can do this and you can do that. Well, on that note, I would like to close this interview and thank you guys very much. 
and wish you the best for next year. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have a short video featuring some of the sponsors that make this program possible. Please check our bulletin board for further information. Also, let them know that you watch the show, that you appreciate their sponsorship. If you would like to be a regular sponsor of SSC TV3 News, stop by. Give us a call or contact us at ssctv3 at gmail.com. Well, right now we have our birthdays for the week. Uh, also, you'll notice that some of them are anniversaries. And so it is with the first one on Sunday. Happy anniversary to Jack and Bobette Davis. Then on Tuesday, happy birthday to Joe Carroll Hudson and to Della Duck Tucker. <coughs> On Wednesday, happy birthday to Dorothy Steinmates. On Thursday, happy anniversary to Terry and Linda Welch. And on Saturday, another anniversary. Happy anniversary to Kenny and Mary Clark. For public service announcements, <coughs> we have one that is every month on the last Wednesday of the month, it's bingo at the Sunflower Center Day. And at 1.30 p.m., uh, you can be there and play bingo and snacks are provided. <clears throat> the first three scheduled hot summer nights has come and typically gone with the wind. It will not be rescheduled and it wasn't held because the wind was so strong it would blow over a lot of the uh, things that would be there. The remaining nights for hot summer nights will be held weather permitting as scheduled on July the 7th and on August the 18th. Then uh, there's some news that fireworks are going to be involved in the city and fireworks can be set off from 7 a.m. midnight on Saturday, June 30th uh, and to midnight, and also uh, on Wednesday, July 4th. So those two days will have uh, fireworks. Then uh, we have, in August 7th, the primary elections that will be here. Uh, please note, a new law passed in 2014 by the Kansas legislature states that party affiliation changes may not be made from June 1st through August. Changes may be made on September 1st or after. A registered voter who is unaffiliated may, however, affiliate with a party during this period and when the voting for the primary or requesting an advanced ballot. We would like to remind everyone around the established truck route in the city limits of St. John that the streets Prairie, Pearl, Monroe, and Main, and Exchange, and Nutting are not always open to traffic. 
The established route starts at Highway 281 and 1st Street and goes to West Broadway and then goes through south to the elevator. Use the same route to exit with trucking. <clears throat> Newspapers, magazines, and television have all enjoyed presenting stories that recall the past. There is just something about the good old days and remembering when that gives us pleasure. The next video is from Channel 9 News Archives as recorded in 1985. There are a number of people mentioned. Perhaps you know them or remember them. Yeah, there are perhaps... a number of videos from the Channel 9 programming days of 1978 through 1991 that have survived until now. The following video is from a Friday, February the 15th, 1985 Channel 9 newscast that was anchored by Debbie Parks, the wife of then police chief Kelly Parks. The fourth greatest student was Amy Cutright. Today, most of you know her as Amy Clausen. The supervising teacher who was off the camera to the right was Martha Cutright. They also have been studying about Charles Lindbergh and Susan B. Anthony. The children finally filled their marble jar with marbles, again by doing good reading work, so they got to play phonics games as a reward. Mrs. Spankenbird's kindergartners have been learning about good dental health from Mrs. Dryden, the school nurse. February is the kid, kids also made by logs, log cabins with doors and windows that open in honor of President Abraham Lincoln. Darren Tra Thrasher brought treats to celebrate President Lincoln's birthday. Mrs. Cutright's fourth graders were pleased to welcome back a classmate, Trent Teaker, who has been go gone for two weeks. He had his tonsils out. Mrs. Dryden also visited in their classroom to discuss a film strip about dental health and then they all played a game about teeth and good health habits. Several fourth graders were featured in the Great Bend Tribune last, this last week, answering the question, who is your favorite singer? The fourth graders were Sharon Higgins, Sarah Rudy, Joel Bieberly, Carl Klinky, Chris Ryan, and Teresa Garcia. Two out of the six chosen, Michael Jackson as their favorite singer. On Thursday, we had parties to celebrate Valentine's Day. Parents who came to help in the rooms were kindergarten, Heidi Goodman, Debbie Munns, Cheryl Weens, Jane DeVore, Connie Selfridge, Kathleen Bright, and Tanya Sanders. Second grade, Debbie Blakesley, Joyce Crocker, Barbara Addison, Eddie Lyons, and Carl, Carol Siefkes. Third grade, Bev Williams, William Wright, Rebecca Hunley, Carol, Carolyn Bowles, Betty Searle, Judy Teichman, and Linda Hamm, fourth grade. Carol Newell, Loopy Gunter, Kathy Blake, Judy Macbeth, Fran Dick, Linda Hinkle, Linda Siefkes, Marilyn Hitz, and Janice Dryling. We spent much of this past week practicing our Valentine music program. It was a lot of work for us and Mr. Norton, but we enjoyed doing it. Thank you, Mr. Norton, for letting us do this program. If you have items that need to be announced on TV3 and or placed on a computerized bulletin board, send them to ssctv3 at gmail.com. Join us again on Cable Channel 3 next Friday at 11 o'clock. If you cannot watch us then, you can watch us at your convenience on the internet at sandylandcenter.org. <coughs> 
Typically, the news will be uploaded and available by noon, right after the show. As you keep us informed, we will keep you informed. And thanks for watching.